So we start by varying the sin fold from the disk. Now under the command tab, we're going to, under variables, we're going to add three new expressions, drag them to the very top of the list. Now for this first one, we're going to name that evaluate. Okay. Now what the purpose of this this little mini tutorial is to create an IK chain that first sort of travels all the way down from the clavicle all the way to the hand and then once the clavicle reaches its limits of being like pointing directly the way it is at the moment um, we'll have a new chain that travels all the way down from the shoulder so okay so under expression uh, we're going to start by picking the IK2D expression which uh, let's see IK2D uh, so it's going to start from the shoulder, no, from the, sorry, from the clavicle, and go all the way down to the hand, and then the IK goal will be the IK goal, and we'll pick just one and one for the alignment switch and the on-off switch. If I right-click next to here, we'll now see that I've got an IK chain that works um, all the way from the clavicle and all the way through the arm all the way down to the hand. Um, but that wasn't quite what we wanted. We wanted to stop this clavicle from going any further down than it's supposed to. So now we're going to use the same trick that we used in the limiting tip, which is to use the clamp function. And we're going to clamp pitch uh, it's already pasted in here because I've done it once, but we're going to clamp pitch between pitch and have a maximum value of zero as um, positive values in this particular object's um, orientation is downwards, you can see in the readout here. So we're going to stop it whenever it reaches zero. So I've prepared this clamp expression and right click next to it. and uh, I'll name this limit the clavicle and now we're going to go to channels pick the clavicle and add that and make sure that this is on pitch and now what we can see is that if I drag the IK handle up it's fine but once I go past a certain point here and the limit has been reached the IK chain no longer follows the rest of the rest of the arm all the way down to the goal. That's what we're going to change now. So here in the third expression, we'll call this check if limit is reached. And um in this expression we're actually going to have like one expression within this condition so it'll be like an expression within an expression and the condition is the cond expression and what we're looking to figure out is whether or not the condition which is clavicle pitch equals equals zero so basically when we know that this expression has been evaluated it should either be more than or well it should not be like zero if it's wrong or it should be exactly zero because that was the limit that we placed on it here. Now if this is true we're going to do a new IK calculation. We're going to do an IK calculation which is the same as this one except for the fact that instead of going all the way from the clavicle it's going to go from um, the upper arm object here. So I'm going to copy that name and paste it in instead of clavicle and then if this is false, 
we'll simply do nothing. So we'll just leave that at zero. Now, if I right click it again here next to the condition, that should pop that expression into this expression here. Uh, pop the setup of the expression into the actual expression, and now it's being evaluated. So now when I drag above um, ab above the clavicle, you can see that the IK is um, is working and it's giving us a kind of auto clavicle effect. And then once it goes below the range which the clavicle will cease to um, move in the up and down direction, you can see that the new IK chain pops in and um, continues to drive the rest of the arm down to the IK target. And these other two expressions here are just to uh, make the pole vector work and uh, align the hand to the um, to this uh, controller.